floor. Yep, come on up. Hello. How you doing? This is a special meeting where you have a full half hour to talk about what you please. Hey. Um. Welcome. Well, just name and maybe just title where you're at, and it'd be great. And you're, you're you got the floor. All right. I'm Susan Choquette. Um, yes, the it red is. light is on. It is. Um, I'm Susan Choquette. I'm the uh, board president of the Opera House Players. I'm Harry Avagelo. I'm in charge of the capital campaign. Welcome. You have the floor. Um, so I guess, you know, the, the reason we're here today um, was to talk about the, the lease, the renegotiation of the... I don't Maybe know. I'll give a little preamble. Yeah. Um, later on in the agenda, we have a renewal of a lease we had entered into with the opera players. Uh, it is actually just lapsed. Um, we've been negotiating with them in the town attorney's office to renew it for a further period up to two years. So we did, we looked at it and pretty much all of the um, provisions remain intact. Uh, they are willing to make the commitment to stay. They have asked the council to make the commitment to keep them. Uh, I'll just give you a little background. Then I really wanted them to focus on what their fundraising is, what their uh, intent is going forward for the shows over the next two years, because they're going to have to continue to utilize the annex. They uh, are using the annex in half for their last production, which was highly successful. I'll tell you a little bit about that. Um, and they've uh, complied with our uh, facilities use policy. Um, so we think they're a, a, a good bet for the future, and we, we were recommending to the council that their lease be renewed. We can discuss the provisions of it. Uh, they're making a good faith effort uh, financially to assist. The last lease was for a dollar a year. This is for substantially more. I think they have great optimism uh, for the future. I think they're a great neighbor there. I think they're going to be a great asset to uh, Thompsonville and to the town. And I, I think that they're somebody worth uh, betting on. I think they have a good, solid plan. We wouldn't have recommended continuing with them if we didn't believe so. I know a lot of you have gone to the performance. We're impressed. They've done more in other areas of town. I think they become a good partner uh, of the town, a good community member. And so we figured while well, we're renewing the lease later in the uh, agenda, which I hope I hope that you will do, uh, under the new provisions that they could give you an update on uh, what their plans are over the next two years, how they what they think they need to raise, the time frame for it. Uh, we're also trying to work with our people. We have some responsibilities under the lease for maintenance and some other things that will continue. Uh, but we're trying to get them in there a little bit on a basis so they could start doing some limited uh, things or, or projects or uh, I, I don't want to say full-blown plays there, but to get the community enamored with them in that town so they're, they're actually part of Thompsonville, just not completely at the annex. So just try to do some things at both locations so people can see that they are going to be there and, and get them into that neighborhood. So I think having set the stage, okay. so, to speak. <laughs> so to speak, I'll hand it over to you. All right, thank you. Um, so yeah, we did our first production um, in November. It was Beauty and the Beast, and a lot of you came to see that. Um, it was a very successful production. We ran four weekends instead of our usual three, and we sold over 2,000 tickets to that production. So a lot of people from the neighborhood um, came to see it, and, uh, and that was a really good experience at the Annex. Um, and our next show is going to be opening in about a month. It's a funny thing happened on the way to the Forum. Um, that'll run three weekends in February. And then our final show this season is Newsies, which is the first three weekends of May. Um, and we're really excited about that. Um, and we are in the process of selecting the shows for our next season. That will, In the spring, we'll announce um, what our next season is going to be. Um, but as uh, was mentioned, um, we would like to... Uh, start to get into High Street a little bit to get people sort of familiar with the Opera House players in that location, um, at least to do some fundraising, um, smaller fundraising events, concerts, smaller scale, maybe a staged reading, something like that um, in the space. So we're working towards that. Um, but what I thought we could do uh, tonight is we brought the architectural drawings, which are a little bit hard to see, but I was going to walk through them and explain what the uh, what the construction plan is for High Street. And then um, Harry was going to talk about, um, he's the chair of our capital campaign committee, and he was going to talk about our fundraising efforts, where we are, and what kind of things we have going on so far. So um, I guess we'll just go with that. <laughs> All right. Um, I have to go up there. There was a microphone. Oh. Can you hear me? Yeah. 
Susan, would you like me to hold it out and move it around? Um, okay. I think I'd like to maybe just point to okay. different things, and then if anybody, can you I, all see it? Yeah, sort of. <laughs> okay, so um, hopefully you've all been in High Street or a little bit familiar with what the church looks like uh, now. Um, so just to orient you, this is the front. Um, so this is High Street here. This is the front entrance of the church, and this is the parking lot in the back. So this is um, a design of what we're calling phase two. We have a phase, we've broken it into two phases for cost purposes. Um, and I'll just kind of walk you through the whole thing and then explain kind of what's phase one versus phase two. So um, this is uh, the sanctuary of the church space. And uh, this is obviously where the auditorium will be. Uh, right now, the wall uh, at the end of the sanctuary is right here. And what our proposal is, is to break through this wall, not to remove it completely, but to break through and make a proscenium opening. And so, as you can see, this green is the stage area. Most of the stage is actually behind the proscenium. Um, here is, sometime in the future, a plan for an orchestra pit. Uh, because the basement is actually fairly shallow. Um, so the engineer and the architect um, said that, you know, we have a possibility of putting an orchestra pit down there. Um, so here's the, you know, entire stage behind the proscenium. And then um, because this little space here is the front lobby, it's not really big enough for a lobby. It'll be used for an exit and there's restrooms up front. Um, but the main entrance would actually be on the side. Um, and it will feed into what would be the new lobby and concessions area over here. Currently, um, the handicap entrance is on this side in the rear. Uh, we would move it to this side, build a new ramp, and the um, handicap uh, accessible entrance will be here. The regular entrance with um, a lift, a handicap lift, would be over here, and they would both uh, feed into the main lobby, box office, concessions area here. Um, back here, um, there are some ba uh, handicap accessible bathrooms back here now. This is a, a sort of a restructuring of the bathrooms that are there and a new restroom. And then here, which is currently all office space, this will be our green room where the actors, you know, get ready for the shows and then a set and scenery workshop um, off to the side here. So that's sort of the overview of sort of what the grand plan is. Um, Phase one really deals with all of the public spaces in the building. So um, all of this, oh, one thing I wanted to show you with the seating. So this is an elevation view of the seating. Um, it would be stadium seating. So um, it'd be all, you know, tiered risers. So every seat would have, you know, an unobstructed view. Um, and they would go up to, um, you know, the balcony is up here. And in the balcony, which was the choir loft, um, that will be, uh, which is right above here, that will be the um, lighting and sound booth area. Um, so all the public spaces would be, you know, the seating, the stage, breaking through the proscenium wall, which is really the biggest piece of the construction because that requires additional support um, in the basement uh, for the weight load and all that. Um, also under this rise seating requires um, additional support work in the basement. Um, and then the lobby area. All of this here um, would remain offices in phase one. And we'll use them as a green room, but they're just not going to be redesigned as a green room. Um, and the bathrooms that are in the rear of the building um, are going to stay as they are currently in phase one. They're the handicap accessible bathrooms, so the public will have um, easy access to those. Um, but um, they won't be reconfigured like they are in this. Um, schematic. Um, also, the front bathrooms will be, the men's room is okay, the women's room needs work, um, and we're going to try to add, it's not on here, but we were going to add one more um, stall in the ladies' room, because you can never have too many of those. Um, I think, oh, there's also um, an accessible lift to the stage. So the whole, um, the theater itself will be accessible and the stage will be accessible, which really opens up to more, you know, more use of the space. Um, do anybody have any questions before I blabber on? <laughs> it looks really nice. Um, with the stadium style seating, um, what will the capacity be? 
Um, it is, I, it fluctuates a little bit each time the architect changes the design a little bit, but it's somewhere right around 187, 190 right now. We were hoping for 200, but I don't think we're gonna quite hit 200. Can never have enough seating. Because <laughs> I went to the Fermi, to the yes. annex, and um, it seemed like there were more than 200 people there. Oh, yes. And our um, largest audience, I think we had just over 300 on one Sunday. So um, that, was, that was great to be able to have that you know, extra capacity. Um, but uh, you know, at our old location, we had 170 seats. So this is a little more. Um, and also the front row, um, th so this is all fixed stadium seats, and the front row is not fixed seats so that some can be moved to accommodate for wheelchairs. So it also would depend on, you know, if there's wheelchairs there. Um, but, uh, you know, we're going to get as close to 200 as we can. <laughs> yeah. Could you tell us a little more about... Um, your, your, I don't know, maybe you're going to be discussing it with, uh, you know, the buying of purchasing of like seats, you know, to help with your fundraising. Mm -hmm. I, oh, well, we do, we do have the buy a seat campaign right. um, where it's actually you purchase a plaque um, that you can dedicate to whomever you like, and that goes on the back of the seats. And we had them um, at our old location, they'll be carried over. Um, and uh, it's, it's like $100 a seat, and it's a dedication right. um, as a donation. That's one of the things that we offer. Okay, great. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Um, Incidentally, all our seats from the old place, we saved them because yes, we're going to reuse them here. Yeah. And we purchased Plus some more. some extras that we need. So, yeah. So. Just curious, is there a potential for phase three where you might add, is there, for the building, knowing the building, is there any balcony seating you'll be able to add at some future, or is that part not part of the plan? No, it, the, the building, the only balcony area is right above here, Got and it, it's okay. fairly small where the lighting is. There's really no, uh, without like totally right. redoing, there's right. really no room for that. But one thing I wanted to mention, when we first, um, you know, when we first got into this project, uh, we knew that, um, you know, we would be breaking through the wall to create a proscenium arch. That that was sort of in our heads from the get-go. Um, the rest was kind of open, but nothing's really drastic. I mean, it's not it's not a uh, an overly elaborate design. We're just trying to use the space as efficiently as possible. But when you have 200 people between the audience and the cast and the crew and all that, um, the building now has to heat and cool. And exits have to be, you know, sufficient. So there's a lot of, um, and and then the structure, the support for the weight of what we're adding, um, that sort of has grown and grown and grown. And the more we dig into the details, the larger the project has gotten. So um, I'll let Harry give details about that. But I mean, what started as what we were estimating, maybe. Maybe three to five hundred thousand dollars for the whole thing, not even close to what we're looking at right now. We're looking at you know like over a million dollars for phase one, and over half of that is in the mechanics and uh, compliance and um, accessibility of the building. It's not even anything pretty that you can see or or anything like that. It's just you know the heating, the electrical, the sprinklers, the accessibility, and it's all very expensive. So. Um, guess with that, I'll turn it to Harry. So. Thank you. By the way, I'm just curious, how many of you, I already introduced myself, didn't I? Yes, yes okay. <laughs> <laughs> how many of you have you seen the inside of the building? Yeah. I strongly encourage the ones who haven't to, to come and see it. Yeah. Get in touch with us because it's a fabulous, the, the stained glass is just gorgeous. It's just a beautiful place. And, you know, our dreams are such that we're going to take total advantage of that to make it fit perfectly with our plans. Um, and speaking of plans, as Susan indicated, initially we thought we were going to be looking for three to $500,000. And we also felt 
that being able to get donors and grants, it will be a snap. It is not. Uh, so between the fact that um, the cost has been going up and the fact that we found things take time, that's when we came to the town we asked for an extension of this arrangement because we needed time to do it. There are a number of possible sources. Interestingly enough, when you start knocking on doors, we found out, and by the way, I had no previous experience on this, so. Uh, um, but I'm learning very fast. When you start knocking on doors, they, can't, they typically say, oh, that's good, we like what you're doing, but um, why don't you do a bit more before you come and see us? So it's a chicken and the egg type of thing. I am very, we are very encouraged because one of the major contributors in the area is the Hartford Foundation of a Public Giving, who can do, do, donate as much as three, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000. Well, we're not gonna get that yet, but we were able to open the door by getting our initial grant. A minor one of $7,000, but guess what? That pays for the custodial services at the annex for one show, which is significant for us. And we're gonna go after many of those small ones. However, we're also going after some very big ones. <clears throat> I don't want to bore you with all the details of some of the ones we're pursuing, but there's a number of sizable ones and that we know of people who can help us get them. Some of them are local people uh, with lots of sources and some of them lots of money who perhaps they can contribute themselves. Some others are politicians who have connections both at the federal and the state level. One example is, um, like last year, I applied for a uh, grant at the National Endowment of Humanities. We did not make it, and at the time I thought I was asking for a lot of money, $150,000. Well, we found out that the reason we didn't get it is because we didn't have enough plans, budgets, and things like that, which we do now. Well, I got word from our congressman's office, who has been very helpful, that they're opening it up again, and they can donate as much as $750,000. Uh, ironically, uh, I was waiting for um, uh, Joe Courtney's uh, assistant, who is the grants guy, to give me some of the connections at the, uh, uh, at the uh, organization to talk to me about pointers, how to best apply, how to really increase our odds. Well, guess what? Due to the closed uh, the government being down, we have to wait for a while. But anyway, that's. It's a long-term thing. But they also have other sources. In fact, Courtney is coming to visit us on the 24th to discuss with us various ways that we can obtain funding because they got connections, they know the tricks, and we don't know them all. There's a lot of stuff going on. It's exhausting sometimes, but we like it. We're getting there. Our dreams are big, and we feel we're gonna make it. Um, as, um, and by the way, I would like to thank, I know Mike was here helping us earlier, the, uh, the Department of Public Works, you know, Mark Garner have been so helpful, you know, trying to obtain facilities for us to have a use of the place because without that we have to run around finding high schools to do it and so on and so forth. So we're encouraged, we have a long way to go, but we feel a two year window is probably reasonable. What would you add to that? Um, so the, the only thing I would add, it was like just about a year ago, I think when uh, we made our decision of, you know, when we were vetting different locations of where to move to, it was, it was just about a year ago in our January board meeting last year where we decided we were gonna come to Enfield and we were all excited and we had in our head, you know, we were like really, young and stupid and we really thought that by November of this year before Beauty and the Beast we were going to be in and operational and the whole you know and uh, boy we didn't know what we didn't know back then and we've learned a lot in this last year of, of you know uh, 
to sort of reset our expectations and sort of the reality of how much it costs and that it's going to take way more time than we expected and yeah. and uh, it's just learning what we need and and you know it's taken six months to get to this point where we have the plans and all of the different, um, you know, working with the architect and the builder and the engineer, and we have a lighting and sound designer we've worked with um, to kind of help us come up with the whole plan and, um, yeah, just to. Well, a couple of additional comments is, which is critical to the reason why the town, in effect, gave us the place yeah. initially is, we are very aggressively going after the community to work together on various projects. I mean, a lot of them. Like, we're talking to organizations with whom together we can put up children's plays. Uh, and there's, there's all kinds of things we're pursuing. Sometimes we're running a little too thin, but there's all kinds of opportunities. Uh, I mean, heavens, as recently as a week ago, I got a call from the uh, English coordinator from the high school, they want our, one of representatives to be a judge at a poetry um, event. So we are beginning to become known, and people want us to be involved, and we do want to be involved. Mm -hmm. We are very, very optimistic. One thing that Susan failed to mention about a year ago is when we were at our old place, we got word that, guess what? Your lease is double. And... Uh, Basically, we got kicked out because we couldn't afford the lease, okay? And I said, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? Well, within a month or so, two towns came along, this being one of them, the other being Vernon, saying, y'all come, we have a place. So things work out. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. and we look for your support, and uh, both in helping us with this and also in making connections with the community because we don't know all these people around here, especially in Thompsonville. So we like to get more people involved as volunteers. I'm not talking about giving money. We'll get to that. I'm talking about volunteers to help with the productions, with uh, designs, with publicity, things like that. So. Um, just one other thing that I wanted to mention, what Harry had um, just touched upon about doing community stuff. I did have a list, which I didn't bring with me. But we've done, uh, we've tried to do as much uh, in the community as we can. We've done, uh, we did our rehearsals for Beauty and the Beast. We were at the Enfield Mall. Um, and sort of as part of that agreement, we did um, a few different events at the mall. We did their Halloween event. We did a few sing-along events. Um, at Christmas time, um, Josh coordinated uh, two days. We were there doing uh, caroling at the mall. Um, we, you know, we did the July Fourth uh, town celebration. You know, on the green. I know I'm forgetting a bunch. And just um, just at our last meeting, uh, we got organized, and I reached out to Jason Neely um, to let him know that uh, we're going to be doing that library pass program. So we're going to be delivering. Um, 10 passes to the library for four tickets, uh, good for up to four tickets each at a reduced rate. Um, so for, for our next show coming up, and we'll do that for each show going forward. So we're really trying to integrate into the community as much as we can um, as we go along. So um, I guess if anybody has questions, we're happy to answer anything. Any questions? I'd like to just add, Mayor, that you know a year ago before they had come, you know, it's promises, and <laughs> yeah. we had yeah. to rely on their good intentions. Well, now we have a track record over the last year, and they've made a commitment, and I think it's, um, I feel comfortable making an investment. I've gone out there, we brought our staff, our chief building inspector, to try to help accommodate them to be able to open up for certain venues, and I think they've shown all of the different things they've attempted to do. Certainly, you see their passion and enthusiasm, but there's a fiscal responsibility from my part and your part, and I think when we reach the lease, they've shown that, that commitment to defray and offset the cost so we can let the people of Enfield know this is an investment in the future which will pay dividends to us, mm -hmm. but they are helping to defray the actual economic costs now because we have tough decisions that we've had to make and may have to make in the future. So I think it is a great partnership. I think they've proven themselves to be people of their word, and I'm very enthusiastic that they're going to be successful and, and contribute uh, to the life and to the culture of the town of right. Enfield. I agree. I don't think there's anyone here that is, we're, we're patient. I mean, we understand this is not easy, and certainly a building 
you're going to, we realize that optimistic was a good word. Yeah. <laughs> I just have a suggestion, and I don't know, maybe already, when you meet with uh, Representative Courtney's people, and I, I, forget, I think it's an annual um, grant. I, I've pushed it. Maybe if you look into Bloomberg, Bloomberg yeah, grant. That's, that's one of the I ones. Mean, your work, if you're doing all this stuff with the schools and the community, mm-hmm. it is a perfect grant for you folks to apply to. And again, if you look some of the research of that grant, I, I don't take this the wrong way and I say this. If Gary, Indiana can win this grant, <laughs> Enfield, Connecticut can win this grant. It's a million dollars. Mm-hmm. And if you're doing the things that you're tying into the community with the schools, mm-hmm. I think we tried to apply a couple of years ago before for something else when, you know, and mm-hmm. we just couldn't get the, the, you know, the things together. I think it's April when you have to apply. Just, I, I again, I don't want to, when we get the new assistant town manager on board, who's going to be looking at helping community, you know, I think it would be a great grant if we could put it together by April that, again, even if we don't win it this year, mm-hmm. we, you, to your point, you learn your lessons how to apply for these things. Right. Yeah. So I'm just a suggestion. I think for me, it's a personal, I, I think we should be winning that grant. If you look at some of the communities that have won that grant, this is a perfect opportunity to win that grant. And by the way, Michael, I should point out, we have talked to Lori about doing some joint things. And perfect. she's the one who says yeah. she definitely wants to help. And she was talking about the addition to the staff. And so we're in sync with that. So, you know. And again, we wish you folks the best. We, we know you're being a partner. And uh, again, we're... I don't think anyone we're still very excited. Two years is not that far away. <laughs> and I, I apologize for yep, talking. Right I do want to add a couple of things about the uh, promising uh, positive momentum at the new location at High Street. Uh, as of 2019, I am the events coordinator for our board, and I'll be responsible for coordinating events to be happening at that location and throughout the community where we are um, reaching out. Uh, so the idea of having the shows there throughout the year, definitely going to be the focus, of course. But we're also going to be looking to bring in events uh, in between the shows, in between rehearsals, to make as much use of the, the uh, location as possible, whether it's an acoustic set, a jazz show, an a, a a author meet and greet, whatever we can do to bring in an event that will add to the base of the uh, mode, um the mission for the Opera House players, that's what we're looking to do. And it's a, it's a really good opportunity for us that the, the Thomasonville has been, you know, sitting on for quite a while. And, and uh, as, oh, by the way, Joshua, if I need to <laughs> put the name course, in there. Yep. Uh, so I, I just want to thank you all for the con- considerations of this uh, opportunity and uh, for the very, very kind words. It's been a long process, <laughs> very hard work being put in by everybody involved. And uh, thank you very much for your time today. Yes. Anyone else have any questions? And we're going to post this on our website tomorrow with a notice that this presentation is there. So if citizens see it and are interested, they can also watch this. Thank you very much, folks. Appreciate it. Thank you. So we have three minutes. So folks want to take a quick break. Come out of a motion to come out of the special meeting by Councilor Ungar, seconded by Council Society. All those in favor of all those for? We have nine in favor, zero against. Uh, the special meeting is adjourned.
of Monday, January 7th. Uh, prayer by Councillor Davis. Please rise. Actually, I have a quote from Susie Cassum. Stand up to hypocrisy. If you don't, hypocrites will teach. Stand up to ignorance, because if you don't, the ignorant will run free and spread ignorance like a disease. Stand up for truth. If you don't, then there is no truth to your existence. If you don't stand up for all that is right, then understand that you are part of the reason why there is so much wrong in the world. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Four. Item number three, roll call, please. Councillor Davis. Here. Councillor Denny. Here. Mayor Ludwig. Here. Councillor Muller. Here. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Here. Councillor Ungeyer. Here. Councillor Bosco. Councillor Sakala. Here. Councillor Crisotti. Here. There's eight members present, one is absent. Uh, item number four, the fire evacuation announcement. In case of a fire, we have an exit out back. Please go to the left or to the right, out the door orderly. Or we have exit to our left and to the audience's right. Please go out the door, go out to the first door to the left, down the stairs, and out into the parking lot in case of a fire. Uh, item number five, the minutes of the preceding meeting. Special meeting, December 17, 2018. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. By Councillor Second. Danny, seconded by Councillor Crisati. Is there any changes or errors or omissions to the minutes? Hearing none, by a show of hands, all those in favor? Opposed? Any abstentions? Nine in favor, zero against? Regular meetings, December 17, 2018. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Councillor Crisati, se seconded by Councillor Sakala. Any changes, errors, or omissions to the meeting minutes? Hearing them by show of hands, all those in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Nine, eight in favor, one abstention. Uh, special guest, item number six, moving right along. Uh, our Deputy of uh, Public Works, Donald Nunes, uh, to comment on tree trimming. Mr. Mayor, in the past, we've had bumps in the road when Eversource uh, has had their subcontractors come in to do tree trimming. Uh, the director brought to my attention that they have a particularly aggressive schedule coming up, so we thought it would be beneficial for all of you and the people in town to know what their plans are. And again, uh, as I've promised, all of these presentations now we're cataloging, and they will be, they're in the various departments, uh, but they're going to be under the town manager, under my website, so all of these presentations in short order after the meeting will be available for those who didn't see it or maybe hear about it and want to learn more, we'll have it there as a resource. Great. Thank you, sir. You got the floor. Thank you. All right. Good evening and Happy New Year, by the way. Uh, so we, this is about the overhead primary trimming that uh, over, Eversource is going to be doing throughout town. We did meet with the Eversource contractor who's going to be Asplund on Friday, December 21st. And we went over a variety of things with the, with the contractor as, as Eversource rep was not available. She's uh, honeymooning in her, so we could give her a break for that one. Uh, just a couple of important things. Asplund is going to be staging across from the dog park at the transfer station. Uh, they will not be fueling in any way, shape, or form there or performing repairs at the transfer station. All of their fuel is bought at local gas stations. You all set, Councillor? You seeing it on the screen? Good. Yep. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Um, so again, they're not going to be doing anything at the transfer station. If they need to do any repairs, it'll be on the street uh, that they're working on. They're going to have ten bucket trucks and chippers, and with three men on each of those machines. So there's going to be thirty people plus foremen driving around. So this is going to be an aggressive. Um, an aggressive mission that they're going to be on. They're going to be following our excavation permit policy regarding the traffic control and use of off-duty officers. So they have a list of all the streets that they have to have uniformed officers on, and they will have their own flagmen on the ones that do not. They will, they will have to go door to door requesting that each resident involved sign a consent form agreeing to the proposed tree work. Now with that, I'm going to get into that a little later, but everyone has to sign that, otherwise that they will not trim the tree. And if they don't trim the tree, they don't get paid for the work in between utility poles. So they get paid by work in between utility poles. So they're going to be knocking on your door and leaving information to have the residents sign. There is no cost to the resident or the town, and their completion date is August 2nd. Now the total tree trimming mileage is 92.38 miles, which is half the town. 
So it's going to, they're going to be widespread and they're going to be out. That's why it's going to take about six months to get through this. Now I handed out a map to you, but every, everywhere that is red, blue, and green will be trimmed this year uh, through August 6th. So there's three different types. There's enhanced tree trimming, which I'm going to get to, backbone trimming, and scheduled maintenance. And each one of those is all totaled up on the right side. So enhanced tree trimming is where they cut eight feet away from the electrical equipment, such as transformers, substations, whatever, eight feet from the ground up away from the utility wire, from everything. So there's some aggressive trimming that's going to be required on some. Uh, this is more of a high priority tree trimming area. Uh, they're really going to focus on those, again, the ones that are in the red because that's going to be for, that could impact more customers based upon substations and otherwise that. If some primary goes out, you're talking knocking out hundreds or thousands of customers, so they don't want to do that. So um, tall growing trees under the wires are going to be removed and branches are cut to typical national standards. Uh, and that's about 2.94 miles. So again, that's everything in red. So a little bit up in, in Green Manor, uh, talk about Abbey Road for the most part, and a couple off of uh, Raffia, where that particular type of tree trimming is going to be taken up. Now, backbone maintenance trimming is, again, they're cutting eight feet to the sides of the electrical, so that's following all the wires, that's following everything. And again, anything underneath the wires is going to be trimmed. Everything up from eight feet out all the way straight up to the canopy is going to be cut out. And that's about 35.9 miles. And again, that is everything in blue. So a lot of the major roads are going to be done that way. And it's going to, it, this was going to take a, a majority of the work. And now for the unpopular one is what they call the scheduled maintenance trimming, where it looks like donuts or kind of big C's or D's cut out of things. Um, they are required, now these are all the streets that are in green. Now they, they're required by their own policy to cut 15 feet above the wires, 10 feet below the wires, and 8 feet to the right at a minimum when they do that. That's why you get some funny looking shapes out there. but. I did speak with the arborist that they had, that Asplon does have on staff, and they said they will, again, to do with as many standards as they can, and if it, they're going to take too much out, they'll just take the tree down. Uh, but again, it has to be with some consent from the town or from the private resident. And that's 53.53 miles of that. And again, and everything in green. So a lot of the residences and a lot of the, on one of the major subdivisions off the side. Now, how this is going to be performed, this is the exact, um, the sign off or consent form that you will that's exactly what's up on the screen over here uh, they do go again door to door and the person will be doing that his name is Alden um, and with this it allows the, the resident if they want the wood they can keep it uh, they can take down any other trees you can you can discuss with this with Asplund if you want a little more can you save a little more over here can you not do it you can kind of uh, I wouldn't say barter, but discuss with them how to trim the tree so it's not mangled or if it's a very special tree and they can get away with a few more, you know, not taking out as much, then they'll work with you with it. But again, this has to be signed and it is in triplicate. One is for the customer, one is for Asplund, and one is for Eversource. So it is memorialized. Um, and some of that happened to do with when if someone wants the wood and the wood is left out in the yard uh, from a couple years ago, do you remember there was a lot of that stacked around and people were, you know, there was just that ugliness to it and people weren't getting to it right away. Now Eversource has a record saying that resident wanted the wood, now we got to go after them instead of Eversource. Door hangers, uh, if you are not home, they told me that they will be hanging these exact door hangers on you and in that information will be this, um, you know, the sign off form and there's a whole bunch of other uh, goodies in here and the contact information. Uh, will be with that. Um, so again, you'll find that only if they came and you weren't home, and the, but you really got to get a hold of them. They also asked us for, tree, as the tree warden, they wanted uh, to sign off basically on a town tree trimming permit, allowing us, allowing them to do the work on, in the right of way. So we're going we're gonna to do that, and again, it's according to state statutes. And what they're going to do if they find a decayed or insect infested or damaged or struck something structurally wrong, they're going to remove the tree. Uh, so they're not going to just trim it and all of a sudden realize that it's, it's going to go down. They're going to, if it's in a town right away, they'll consult me or one of my, uh, the Greg or John Cabibbo, and they'll go out and take a look at it and just say, take it down, and, and that's the end of it. So they will do that. And they also, with the resident as well, if they find one, they'll discuss with the resident about taking it down. And again, there'll be no cost to that. 
little trees or saplings again that are underneath the wires are going to come out um, limbs that are limbs will be pruned back to uh, their branch collar so where the branches y off or they v off they'll be cut back to there it's typical they're not going to leave little weird stubs so they're going to be cut back to the butts um, with that now those the chippers out there do have a capability of handling a 15 inch branch so if you can imagine this is about 11 inches so you imagine the logs about that big that's some big stuff there and they're going to be whizzing through there so if you want that logs you know again they'll they'll leave them for you the larger logs if they have to take down a tree they said they'll be stockpiled on this uh, in the right of way because they're, they're going to have a tree truck or a logger truck come back every week or two when they get enough when they get enough to fill one of those big logger trucks one of the big clam on the side that picks it up and stacks it they can't have one on site every day because they don't need one and that means they're gonna have to man it, have a driver man it whatever so when they get enough for one truck it could be two days could be a week could be two weeks then they'll come back and pick up all those logs and that's how they're going to work on it so jenna turner is the uh, arborist for eversource she is the main contact and alden bianchi is the contact for as asplund and these are their phone numbers and we'll definitely post those up uh, i gave the uh, copy of the presentation to maya who posted i'm sure who posted up on that and we'll post it up on our website too but if there's any information again you're going to be they're they're going to be canvassing the neighborhoods now leaving on these with hangers i already know a few people who have them so in case you get calls I, again i don't want you to be blindsided by this there's going to be a lot of work going on and so you know what's uh, what to expect so the residents it is a real project and in, that's what you'll be will be receiving is definitely one of these that's what we were particularly concerned with because i think we're going to have a lot of by the very nature of this and scope a lot of complaints so that we wanted to give a heads up to you tonight and to the residents we'll put this on the website tomorrow um, we'll also do a press release very brief we're going to work uh donald does very well with Maya, just to let our residents know this isn't a scam they're not con artists if somebody's coming to knock you know it's appropriate with eversource and then we're going to do this specific information uh to you in an email donald will give it to me tomorrow and i'll send it to you because i know you're going to need it and as time goes by and you get direct complaints, you obviously will forward them to me and to Donald, but you'll have the direct information as well. So we'll do the best we can to get the information out there. But given six months, 92 miles of road, most of the town, uh, things being stored in the right of way, it, it, it's going to be, I, I can just guarantee you, there's good, there, there obviously will be concerns and issues that will arise and we'll deal with them. So, Any questions? So just curious, Don, if just by chance, if someone, if someone's street is not on here, mm -hmm. can they call that number and just say, look, can you take a look at, for whatever reason, they didn't realize that one street may or may not need it. You know, it may, I'm just saying, if it's not on here and a resident says, you know, hey, I, I got branches going between the, the wires and it's yep. not on the list, can they call that number or do they call the town or both? We, secondary secondary lines are very like I was telling I was talking before secondary right. lines secondary power lines which are not the three up on the top the very very top are, are primary they're called primary yeah so it's either one or three that you'll see on the very very top of the utility pole those are the ones that they're concerned about now secondary wiring is the ones that go from the transformers to your home or they're they're the ones that are on the lower side um, per their website and per their protocol they don't typically prune secondary lines unless it's really unless the, the insulation on the wires exposed or it's causing a hazard or it's so stretched out or it's like a branch is hanging on that's when they'll do it um, fortunately with we did some bartering with asplund to this because they need stuff from us and you know right. we have a few locations that we were talking about that may need that um, we can work with them on a few okay. of them i don't i don't know if we can handle 50 or 100 of those but i know that we can possibly work through you know definitely okay. a few of them so okay I think that's important to know too. So. Okay, Council Crisari, then Council Angar. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> that form that's sent and then you know putting that envelope and yep. given to the residents, they have to fill that out and, and and sign off for it. Yes. And what happens if a resident doesn't sign it? I was told that the, they'll 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 still do the job. Uh, there, there has to be some understanding with that that they that has to be done and so they don't want it to come to a point where we're going to do it whether you like it or not we're going to they don't want that animosity they, they want to work with the people so they'll try to get to a point where you know can we just trim a little bit here well we may not have to do that full 15 foot cut 
can we work with you? But, then, but I'm just saying that there's going to be some residents who I understand, will, will and they're, see they're, they'll, then they'll and get they'll, us involved. They're going to put it in their mail. They're going to forget about it and and not put it back on their their doorknob. Right. It, 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 it well, behooves they, the, while they're doing the job. Will they come knock on 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 your door and just say, "We're here today and we're going to be." Taking no, because they're already start canvassing. I asked them to not uh, start canvassing until. Uh, yesterday, so we can kind of get so we didn't want all these people out there because there's there's several people that are going out knocking on doors already. Correct. We didn't want them out there in full force doing that. So while they're there, if they have to skip a tree, they told me they will skip it and come back because they cannot get paid until that full distance between utility poles is cut. Right. So they're going to be aggressive in trying to get it done. Well, but for well, the people who hold out, there's we'll have to negotiate with them and, and well well this is great you're giving everybody a fair warning and being very transparent like we've been doing so Councilor um am i right you said it's six months to complete yes. that whole section the um, all, the all 90 all 93 miles or so yes okay and um when do you anticipate actually starting after you get they're going to be canvassing still and they're after going to be the getting probably done. next week if not sooner Okay. Now that now that we've had now that we're we're here, and now that we again we've informed everybody we're we're gonna they're gonna probably gonna be starting in earnest as long as they again have their sign offs they're gonna start working. So could we maybe have a quarterly update? Just, Certainly. I mean, so now you don't have to come every month, but since it's what three quarters, first, second, third quarterly update till they're done in August. Sure. Just in case there's anything with complaints we've heard, any issues, how we dealt with them. Give a status. Yeah, just the status, and even if there has been issues. That'd be, if we could do that, would be great. Okay. Deputy Mayor Suzak. I guess they're going to have their equipment in the town of Enfield. Do they pay any taxes or is there any kind of an agreement as to, I guess, when equipment is in the town that we do collect taxes on it? I don't know that. I know they're only going to be here for six months, so I don't know if that was something that's done in December or, or before. I don't know when. I, I, I do not know that answer. John's here, so we can look at it, and he can talk to Della about it. Okay. I know that's come up in the past, and it's come up in the past, and I, and you know, because it's a question that always comes up, we need to ask it, answer it, and know what, what it right. is. Thank you. Course, and I would sir, like to thank Donald, as usual, for his very thorough and informative report. And for all of our viewers at home, I'll give you a preview of coming attractions. He will be returning, uh, probably <laughs> the last meeting of February, early March, to give us a complete. Uh, review and preview of the roads projects that have been undertaken by the town since 2000 where we where we stand today and what a prospective road project 2020 would look like so mark your calendars so chris curious do we know d does eversource publicly um they must publicly uh, illustrate their current rates so that they're you know they're whatever there's a general uh, electric rate. I mean, I know it's based on usage, but is there a general rate that they publish right now? I I'm not familiar with know. the utilities uh, laws on, or what they do. We, I know, can we can just, ask the town attorney to look at that. I know, can we look at that just in case after they do the you know they do the work that you know they're not coming back for us for a huge increase. I'm I've, I'm sorry. I've heard them do that at the utility uh, you know, committee where they've done some tree work around the state and they've come back and asked for huge increases to pay pay for the work just so again we can be again transparent if that's the case we'll have to deal with it at the time well i heard it one i mean as again their utilities and you know right. the state preempts us in a lot of areas no, i know the, but still public uh, utilities commission i heard one past <coughs> governor refer to his I puke my, and said it's very appropriately named uh because we have very li little they did, can't with there's a couple towns down in uh like um the torrington valley that they i saw that they you know, end up jacking up huge rate increases after they did some tree work so I'm just curious. Go ahead, go I just ahead. want a clarification on the question you're asking, Mike. Is, is that the delivery rate? Because everything else is, you know, you go on the website and you, you pick whatever provider you want for electricity, but you brought up a good point right. that we pay for delivery on all this, and sometimes our delivery fees more than our electric fee, right. and I guess that that's really what... So just, just so we can make sure we I track. I understand. Sure. Yep, thank you. An unrelated uh, subject, maybe I can... Councilor Denny, go ahead. Yep. A little clarification, Donald, uh, if you don't mind. I'm getting a, a few complaints uh, on the corner of Route 5 and uh, Montana. Uh, I understand with my own research that the state requires us, uh, the sidewalk 
kind of abuts comes out onto Montana when Route 5 a little mm -hmm. bit. And people are complaining that they're, they're kind of hitting that sidewalk because it's been protruded out. But I, my own research tells me that the state is requiring them to, to kind of, I mean, it's not in the roadway, but it's out. And if you mind, you have somebody just look at that. Sure. Uh, I, I'm just thinking that that's, I've seen them all like that now. And they're kind of like aproned and down, and they come down. Yeah. But they're, there's a few people that are living in that neighborhood have been complaining to me that the sidewalk is actually protruding out onto Montana. I don't see it myself, and I think that, I think that the state uh, or whatever the requirements are, uh, there's a lot of them that look like that around. And uh, okay. just I for my own general information so I can pass it on. Thank sure you. Sure thing. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. Moving on to item number seven, public communications. Does that, would anyone like to speak for the town council at this time? Thank you. Thank you, Diana. Bob. Welcome, just name and address. I, I forgot my name. I, I. <laughs> Enfield Bob. Perfect. Happy uh, New Year, sir. Bob T. Katz, 815 Woodgate Circle. Uh, I got a problem tra with the ETV. Not, not, not the programs or anything like that, but the problem is you don't transmit in high definition. So this whole presentation is, when you look at it on TV, it's blurry. It's hard to read, and it's too small to read. And I got a 60-inch TV, and it's still too small. And, the, and I, I talked with uh, the gentleman that runs the operation. He says, we don't transmission high definition. Uh, so you have to upgrade your equipment. 1947 equ uh, television equipment from Channel 6 doesn't work anymore. Uh, I'm going to keep it short because I got two jobs. And I get up at 1 o'clock in the morning, and a friend of mine owns a company. He said he's short of drivers. He gave me a, a wonder, wonderful rate to do it, so I had to take it. But my other boss, who's Italian, says, I need you. So he's giving me a job in the morning, uh, picking up taxes from four different towns to bring to the banks. And uh, he says, uh, I'll let you invest in the company, he says, because... If you give me cash, if I, if I don't get the cash, I have to, what they call factoring, selling as receivables at a high interest rate to companies. And uh, he said, if, if you just give me 5,000 a week, I'll give you uh, for five weeks, 5,000 a week for five weeks, I'll give you 6,000 a week, just keep renewing it. So I had to take it, I had to take the job, so I'm sorry. I, I plan to talk about a lot of things, but I got a, the high school report, Everybody, everybody said the new high school is going to have great performance. This report, we're below state average, we're below the ERG. And the uh, junior and senior population in the report that I gave you is down. Um, the kindergarten is down. It'll be up the next two years, but the 2017 births are down, so it's going to be down again. Uh, you're going to have, you've got over 1,000 empty seats with the middle school now and the high school, and when you get the new middle school, you're gonna have about 1,200 extra seats. So the Chef O'Neill decision's coming down, and one of the decisions that they're gonna contemplate is closing Hartford schools, New Haven, and Bridgeport, and moving them to all the suburbs. So the more empty seats you get, the more students you're gonna get. That could be one of the decisions. I don't know what it's gonna be. So you're just opening yourself up for more students for Hartford. If that's what you wanna do, get more empty seats. And I didn't include the Barnard Wing that when the, the Board of Education moved over to Alcorn. So you got, that's, that's even adds more. That wing even adds more seats. So that's your decision what you want to do. If you want to have more students, you're going to have to hire more teachers. Teachers are very hard to get. They're going on strike. They want more pay. Uh, right now, our average is $71,000 a teacher. Back in the 80s, we were paying the teacher $75,000, so I don't know what's happening. 
maybe they all retired and the new teachers are not paying, probably got a second level. So we're going to have some major problems in our school systems. Lamont wants to uh, uh, fix the achievement gap. The, the uh, governor of Massachusetts wants to fix the achie achievement gap. We got an achievement cavern in Enfield. Looking at the report, I'm disappointed. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Anyone else I can speak for the council? Mr. Young. It's already, in, it's already running, George. <laughs> Thank you, George. Happy New Year, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This looks like a... <laughs> this looks like a 10-minute presentation. Well, you're exactly right. <laughs> Five or at least three later, and hopefully two at the end. Uh, tighten your seat belts. Since most of the people have not and will not read the budget book and or the annual financial report that's audited, I would like to continue to highlight some of the information that is in there. At the last council meeting, I suggested a $2 million cut in the budget and the amount of the money, and the amount of money the taxpayers in this town have to pay by a reduction in the mill rate. I know you have given this a lot of thought over the holidays. I would not ask you to do the impossible. At the last meeting, I was so glad someone mentioned that they love the enthusiasm of the public, but we have to realize that the state of Connecticut and the governor cut $2 million from our budget. I do realize that Connecticut and the governor cut many dollars from our revenue, and we don't think the council raised our mill rate, mill rate maliciously. Cutting the mill rate does not always mean cutting from the bottom. I could have responded at that time to this comment, but I wanted the council and the town manager to have time to digest what I had already tried to say. The town had budgeted revenue from, the, from interest for the year ended June 30th, 2017 of $110,000 as shown on page 51 of the annual audited financial report and the actual amount was $2,130,631 or $2,020,631 in excess of the amount of revenue that was anticipated. This amount of $110,000 was also budgeted on page 16 of the 2018-19 budget book. As I put this together, I could not look at the year ended June 30th, 2018, because the annual audited financial report was not yet available. The excess of interest earned of $2 million contributed to the $3.2 million net increase in the general fund for that year. If we had a general fund of $30 million, as reported on 3.1 page of the annual audited financial report, that could be at least $900,000 of interest income in 2018 and 19 at only 3%. But we continue to see that amount as only $110,000. I'm sure the town gets more than 3% on its funds. I would now like to say a few words about OPEB. As many of you know, OPEB is an acronym for Other Post-Employment Benefits, which for our town seems to be only the health care benefits for those that have left the town's employment or their spouses. The town's are actually computed net liability for those that have left our town through June 30th, 2017 was $42.8 million. As indicated on page 57 of the June 30th, 2017 audit report, it represents more than 57% of the covered payroll. As shown on page 48 of the annual report of June 30th, 2017, the town recognized OPEB expense of $34.6 million for the plan. Many companies today are substantially reducing their post-employment health benefit. Is our town negotiating in this direction? for new and current employees. Different subject. It was good to see that there is real project progress on the St. James West Roads project and the expected starting date to be April of 2019. There is one thing that was mentioned when the project was addressed about a month ago, which is the reduction of the width of St. James 
Is this advisable with cars parked on both sides of this main artery between Elm Street and Brainerd Road, and with cars going in both directions on St. James? The last thing we need is a reduction in the width of that road from 36 feet to 30 feet just to make it uniform. It is better to raise this issue now rather than later after you start digging. The road width should remain unchanged or at least go to 36 feet and not 30. At the last meeting, Mr. Kruzel, chairman of the Board of Education, said he doesn't want to hear the F word again now that the JFK resolution has been approved. Uh, I'm sorry to disappoint, but as part of everything this new committee is doing, I would like them at least look at something of shortening the time it takes to complete this project. Because building, rebuilding like new to JFK to, would save money and get this project in under budget. One suggestion is for them to look at is to move all the students to Fermi versus, them, versus letting them stay at JFK sure. during the construction. What would be saved in time and potential liability for workplace injuries because of distractions, et cetera, is at least worth a thought. I realize this is an inconvenience, but we need to weigh this as an alternative in the long-term effect. This is not like the high school renovation. I hope this would at least be looked at and not just thrown out. I'm done. Sit in the front row. I don't know if I give you anyone else like to speak for the council. You're right back up, sir. Go right ahead. Go ahead, George. Just stay there. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Just want to make sure everyone, if anyone else wants to speak, but go ahead. You go right ahead. Nope, you go right ahead. You were right on second paragraph on page two. Yes, I know. Thank you. Sorry, go ahead, sir. I have looked at uh, George Young, 8 Holly Lane, Enfield, Connecticut. I have looked at the August 22nd list of delinqu delinquent taxpayers, real estate, and there are at least two property owners that appear in multiple years. It's public record, but if I can't mention their names, tell me now. Hearing nothing, one is Save Our Strand, Inc., which owes the town about 132000 for which we provided services such as fire, police, etc. At one time, I was one of the tenants in that building, and if we didn't pay the rent, it was probably goodbye. I realized that the town acquired the property as of March 21st, 2018. Is this in full settlement of the $132,000 I mean debt? Since they are still listed as owing the town as of August 22nd, 2018, how are we collecting their debt or is it worthless? If we can't collect directly, is it possible to attach the owner's bank accounts or some other actual action taken against them as liens are doing nothing? It has been 15 plus years on the current list without payment. It would be great to demolish the business, I mean the building, and create a parking lot for the area if nothing else is going on. The second property owner is Titanium Properties Connecticut, LLC, from Milford. They owe about $68,000 over the past few years. It seems that they spent $1.1 million buying vacant lots for development in the past few years and have only paid for part of the year 2015 and probably as a goodwill gesture. The land is in the area of beautiful homes near the back of the Enfield High School. Why aren't we collecting the taxes? Does the town have something in place that all monies owed will be paid even if only one completed lot is sold? They seem to be speculating on the construction of more beautiful homes and putting us on hold until they are done. This makes me angry because I am not a bank and neither are the other taxpayers in this town. It makes me concerned about future taxpayers. This is not a good precedent. It seems like an unauthorized reverse mortgage for speculators. Let's spend a moment talking about something beyond the TIF program for Thompsonville. Would it be possible for the Thompsonville Revitalization Committee to take a look at the Goodwin Development Trust model of improving the quality of life in a neighborhood such as Thompsonville? This could be the type of plan Thompsonville needs where community involvement in the area, benefiting the citizens of that area, really matters. It is only a suggestion, and if you have already done so, that's great. Somehow we should support the $700,000 needed to get the school roofs completed. It is my understanding from prior meetings that this will be mostly reimbursable by the states. Perhaps all the additional interest that we haven't budgeted for and we are probably going to get could be used in a positive way. Mr. Wilcox and Mr. Bromson probably could say the funds are available. Uh, three months are up. 
No, go right ahead, George. Keep going. Okay. I want you to finish. And I will. Thank you. Happy New Year. <laughs> I'd like to take my last 120 seconds and go back <laughs> to the August 22nd, uh, 2018 delinquent real estate taxpayers list, which is published on the town's website. As I was looking through this list to dollarize my prior comments for certain taxpayers, I, some, I spotted something in the list which jumped off the page to me. One of the delinquents' total taxes due, plus other charges, were off by $10,260, $261 some pennies. Observing that, I checked the grand total page, and it was off by $7,747. Obviously, this should, not be, this should be looked at, because there has to be more than one taxpayer whose total is incorrect, or a column is missing, or there is a programming error. This is important, but I do not want to mention what the possibilities are at this time. However, I'd be happy to discuss them with any member of the council or the town manager if they're interested. The second thing I want to mention is that we need to put some teeth into collecting delinquent taxes, and not just the application of liens, which have shown do very little. As a general rule, if a taxpayer owes motor vehicle taxes of $14, for example, and wanted to register their car, it could not happen until they paid the $14 back tax or whatever amount they owed. We have some excellent people working on the Planning and Zoning Commission and the Wetlands Commission. It is a necessity and a privilege for many people to come before these committees, commissions, excuse me. I would like to suggest a policy that, policy that no delinquent taxpayer could appear there or get building permits from the town until they settle their back taxes on all properties they own. I'm sure the legal department could word this to be effective. Uh, I think I'm done after 14 pages in the last few months. 20 seconds to spare, George. I'm, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for putting this together. It's a tough act to follow. Anyone else like to speak before the council? Hearing none, I declare public communications closed. we we'll move on to item number eight, council communications. Councilor Ungar. I'd like to wish everyone a happy new year. And I'd also like to congratulate uh, the explorers post 820. They had a beautiful ceremony, a family night over at Mount Carmel this past weekend. And they packed that room out and the food was great as usual. Uh, they had a lot of promotions and awards. And so I just want to congratulate the explorers. They're a great group of kids. Thank you. And what else? Councilor Denny. <clears throat> George, you kind of stole my thunder tonight, but. Uh, <laughs> Um, about the JFK, uh, because I asked this question before, and I'm going to ask it again. Uh, we're going to put out a, uh, uh, an email to uh, the committee. Uh, I'm looking for answers about a one-year or a two-year project. Uh, I, always, I asked this question before when the last committee was here, and it got shot down, uh, about moving to the annex, because I'm not allowed to say the F word. Uh, so you stole some of my thunder, but I've always had that idea, uh, move all those students. We don't have an extra building like we did at Enfield High to move students into. We'll be going to be working around it. Some rumors around say it's going to be a three-year project. Three years is going to be more, more cost money, and I'd just like to know if the study says, I know there will be some type of a cost, but transportation won't be a, a problem. We're using the fields already. There's space over there and so forth. Uh, my second concern uh, probably goes to the town attorney also through the mayor, but uh, the town manager or everyone here. Uh, <clears throat> I was concerned about some of your uh, examples of our uh, committee, I guess, to speak, a uh, blight review committee. Uh, one of the things about that, my concern is that I don't want town council people serving on it. I don't want uh, town employees or uh, et cetera, et cetera, some of your uh, examples were. Taxpayers, voting members of the town, fine. Anybody else, I don't think they should be involved. It should be from residents only. And last but not least, <clears throat> uh, facilities committee and the JFK committee. There are people that are on both committees. It e the time needs to be either changed or one or the other committee. 
because right now they're having a half an hour meeting on facilities because because people have to run to the other meeting. So I've had some complaints of people that are members on that, on that uh, situation. Uh, um, this is for, to the mayor. Uh, it may be a different night for facilities. You know, JFK is just not one building. We have 30 buildings that we're looking at facilities and a half hour meeting, and then we'll run into the other meeting. Either change the night or get off one of the committees and go to the other one. I know it's a, to me, it seems like it might be um, a um, conflict of interest or you, everybody wants control of both committees. I, I'm not sure, but one committee, if you're on one committee, you shouldn't be on the other one. If you, if you can't put time into it, then a half hour meeting doesn't do anything. Thank you. Mayor Suzak and yeah. Councilor Cassati. Actually, there are. Uh, I just received an email, Ed. So just to update you that they are looking to move the um, JFK to Wednesday. Randy's doing a a survey. Um, I had originally asked for more liaisons and to have more integration between facilities and JFK because. A lot of the things that are going on in facilities would require uh, reuse of our buildings, and reuse of the annex is a significant factor in how this town will move forward, whether they will move forward with one large building or they will move forward with a lot of small buildings. Uh, the meeting did not just go on for a half hour. They picked up and left. We still had a quorum. We still finished the meeting. We did have significant conversations on that, and I'll report on that later. But at this point, I think we're working on that, Ed. I'm just glad to be able to report that to you. And I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules and move items A1, A2, B1, E, F, G, H, I, J, and K to miscellaneous. Motion made to suspend the rules. And proceed to vote. Second, Second by Councilor <laughs> Sakala. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none by show of hands, all those in favor? Opposed, abstentions, nine in favor, zero against it, suspend the rules and move the miscellaneous. What's that? Council Crisati. Okay. <clears throat> Got it. Uh, there's two things that I want to mention, actually three. One, Ed brought up, George, George brought it up, Donna brought it up, uh, and it, it is a major concern. Uh, about the time for the joint facilities and the JFK building committee. I mean, that, that, that is a, a major issue, and I'm glad that it's going to be uh, addressed, and I'm sure that it'll, it'll make do because it's very difficult being on uh, joint facilities and then, you know, because I, I was one of them that had to, you know, pack up and, and go to the other meeting. And, you know, I... He did everything when you left. And he did everything after we left, and that's, you know part of it anyway but you know there's a lot of decisions that that have to be made there and we can't have a conflict of interest and you know I, I don't I don't have an issue uh, you know we feel that the members of the Joint Facilities Committee need to be really almost independent of that JFK committee and I just wish maybe some more people would step up and to be a member of the JFK committee so that we can still be members of the facilities committee uh, the other thing I, I just want to mention was the Police Explorers Night was, was an outstanding uh, event. Uh, once again, uh, hats off to Willie Petamonte and, and his crew that, uh, you, know, you know, you have 37 kids now involved in that program. And uh, when that program first started, there was just five. So, you know, over these last several years, to get kid, kids involved like that and to see them move on after they're finished with that program and a number of kids either they're entering into the service or continuing on with their college career the other thing i want to say is to uh to, to don noons and his staff and uh to uh mr bromson um, that we were happily able to notify the residents of bridge lane about the work that's being done and the stone work that's being done at the on the culvert which you know from our you know previous meetings in the fall stating that we weren't going to we we're going to wait until the springtime 
but the work that is being done right now, I've had two emails and uh, many phone calls stating that that stonework is beautiful and uh, the residents are really happy with that. And I, I personally did call um, uh, the major complaint complainant, uh, Leah Hurst, and uh, she was very, very happy that the project is uh, well underway and very happy with uh, the work that's being done. And uh, so hats off to that, and I'm just glad that uh, all the residents down there are happy. Uh, and it really does look beautiful if you take a right drive down there. So I just wanted to mention that. Yeah. All set? All set. Councilor Zakala. Thank you. Um, just really quickly, I'd like to put my two cents in on the JFK and the uh, Joint Facilities Committee. In no way do I want to discourage people from volunteering because that's really a lot of these committees. They're volunteers, and that obviously means that people care about this community and want to see it succeed. Um, I don't know that moving the time of the JFK or the Joint Facilities Committee meetings are going to be the right answer, and this is why. Both of those committees are so, I'm going to say, labor intensive and so important that if you're asking or having some of the same people or many of the same people on both of those committees, they're going to get burned out. They're not going to be able to dedicate all of the time and the energy to each one of those meetings each and every week. Um, that's my two cents. Again, I'm very happy and we welcome volunteers, so I'm in no way in shape and form telling people they shouldn't volunteer. But it's something, those two committees are two of the most intensive and important committees that we have, in my opinion. Um, the only other thing I wanted to mention is, through the mayor to the town manager, if we can get an update on when the representatives from the North Central Health District are going to be here, that would be great. I mm -hmm. think they were supposed to be on the agenda for this month. Um, so if we can figure out when they're going to be here, that'd be great. Thank you very much. Councilor, uh, Deputy Mayor Zuzek. I think I have to clarify, because I think sometimes what goes on in discussions here, I think we kind of know a lot more of what, who the players are and what's going on. Um, I think you have to understand that none of the voting members of the JFK Building Committee are also members of facilities. It is the liaisons that are pulling double duty. And I think that they're pulling double duty because they're trying to keep track of um, built really maintenance and building usage. That being said, I just wanted people to understand that it was not the voting members that we put on that were the volunteering citizens that were on both committees. We did have some apply and then some chose one committee or the other. It is the liaisons to JFK who are the working members of the facility. So I just want everybody out there to understand, I guess, what's, what's going on. Um, it, it, it is difficult and it is hard because there's so much work that's been put in and um, we really feel that there's a, such a need for coordination. And I think that that's perhaps through the mayor to the town manager, when will we hear any more talk about a facilities manager that's a staff person? And a staff person who actually puts a record together such that it's, it's policy driven and not personality driven because I think we sometimes in business and in government have things that don't go on in a proper fashion because permanent records are not kept. We're too reliant on personalities than policy. Thank you. Councilor Davis. George, I want to thank you. As you said, 14 pages of hardcore research you have done for us. Thank you very much for all your time and dedication. Through the mayor to the town manager, uh, George had quite a bit of questions, one with the Strand Theater also. If someone can actually answer some of his questions for him, I'd appreciate that. Thank you. Anyone else? Hearing none, move on to item number nine, town manager report. In regard to the last matter first, uh, we'll look at that uh, to see what the agreement was. 
uh, fortunately or unfortunately, a lot of those deals where we take on property, the tax debts are right. extinguished. So I, that was before my time. We'll see what the agreement was there, and we'll look into the facts of it. Um, in regard to also taking second from last, uh, Deputy Mayor Susak's comments, um, there was a recommendation by Novak uh, to have a facilities person. Uh, as you well know, you discussed the other evening, we're going out for an RFP uh, to get a consultant to look at consolidation. Clearly, if you're going to consolidate buildings, and also we've talked about Honeywell and doing roofs, uh, new high schools, new junior highs, you need somebody to be keeping track and making sure we're doing the maintenance and repairs. So certainly that's something we're going to look at. Um, we've had in the subcommittee look, looking at the NOVAC report, there is a cost associated at water pollution control and also on the town side. Those are things I think best addressed and we will be recommending that uh, in the upcoming budget. But as you know, it's going to be, again, a, a, a very tight budget. So I think it will depend on what the state does and how some other things go as to whether or not you'll be able to fund it. But I think it's critically important to have it. Um, to make all of these improvements and to spend all of this money and then not maintain our, our infrastructure is just throwing good money after bad uh, in the long run. Um, I would also mention we passed uh, a, a few months back a policy in regard to the acquisition of surplus military equipment. And I, I think it's worked well. We wanted to do it. In other words, you would give me authority to talk to the chief and okay it uh, to acquire property under some criteria that it, it wasn't um, badly damaged or it was going to cost a lot to maintain, that we had enough money in our budget to, uh, to uh, purchase it or go and get it. And I'll just tell you most recently I sent to you today, I'm not going to discuss at length, but they did after January 3rd go out and they did acquire quite a few very important pieces of equipment totaling around $13,000 $13, in value, things the department needed that we know not will not have to take out of the budget they have a you know a, a kitchen area for the uh, officers over there it's delinquent it, it, it's all of the uh, uh, utilities in it need to be replaced and one of the items they were able to get is a stove uh, that was new valued at seventy six hundred dollars for free so that's something that the taxpayers don't have to pay they also got shooting mats they got elliptical equipment they got a refrigerator for their kitchen there so this this is working out well we'll continue it and uh, they also have their eye on some other things. But speed was what was important. We couldn't give them permission by coming to the council first because other people grabbed the stuff. So now we're on the cutting edge and they go out there. Um, and I, I think the, um, the rewards have been good. Is there, through that, is there a way for, I mean, can, hey, to that, is there a way the town can help? Again, well, our, idea, our idea that I know we didn't talk about purchasing any vehicles or anything. Again, it would be great if we could purchase a, you know, one of these old Humvees for a buck and give it to one of our young entrepreneurs and let them do their own little version of duck tour up and down the Connecticut I River. I did discuss that with the chief, and those types of vehicles are not available, but he'll keep his eyes open. Maybe, you know, the, the the, all the bird watching we have on, on the river, I mean, yep. we have uh, some entrepreneurs in this town. We're talking about economic development. We can help them with purchase a vehicle for a very cheap rate and showcase the beautiful river that we're trying to showcase. He'll be on the lookout, but at this right. juncture, those are not the type of equipment right. that has been available. Uh, and there is no formal PAR report this month there will be next any, any questions other questions for the town manager Sorry, North right. Central Health North District. Central. Oh, yes, we had extended and had listed as a guest Patrice, the executive director from the health department. I had met with her. We extended an invitation. There had been some back and forth then between some council people and, and she and members from the town that represent us on the board about further information. So she said she's going to be gathering more information. I will extend an offer uh, and indicate that the council would like her to come here publicly to do it, not just meet with me, but to be able to share it with you and answer any questions about the services um, that they provide and um, the finances of the health district so our, our taxpayers know we give a per capita uh, charge each year uh, to participate in that North Central Health and we'll extend another inv invitation for her to come uh, at one of our meetings next month and I'll keep you so posted. Councilor uh, Sakala, any idea maybe do you, if you guys would like to put some um, some questions you may have together or concerns and we have ours and maybe we can do them in an email sure. get them to you. So in fairness to her, she'll be prepared to some of the tough questions that I'm sure both sides have. I think that would be more productive. So fair to you folks? Yep. Yep. Yeah, we're good with that. All right. If you would gather those, I'll send something out tomorrow asking you to give them, right. to give them to us the next week or so, and then I'll tell her we'll All provide right. them and provide her with the comfort level and time to prepare right. so, so you show yeah. all the answers when she's here. It would be more productive. Perfect. Any questions for the town manager? Thank you, sir. Uh, moving on to item number 10, the town attorney report. 
Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Town Council. Happy New Year. I do have just a few things to mention. In terms of the Blight Review Committee, um, what I think might be helpful is to send everything to the Development Services Great. Committee so that it can be looked at a little more closely and you can determine with specificity what kind of membership you want on that committee. And if you want the more, um, the full responsibility, something beyond just fine reduction, as the mayor had mentioned to me in passing, something that's the, the more involved resolution rather than something that's just value driven. So you can look at that. So too. other other than just the makeup of the committee, do you have any, I mean, do you have a preference for the just review and fines or the sort of option too that you put together where you got a little teeth into the committee? No, 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 I, I'd like the whole the whole more involved. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's something that development. So number services. two, but I think it's to make up the committee the make of the up issue. The committee, okay. but also, yes. The more involved. Okay. Very good. And the other issue that development services might want to look at, we've been talking to staff, a finance director, the assessor, as well as development services director for putting together some guidelines for tax abatement because at the last meeting there was some interest in having something more specific so we sat down and put something together staff has it back and then it'll be forwarded to the town manager for his review and passing on to development services the um, other item I wanted to mention because it had come up while we were looking at blight is review of other communities looking at unregistered motor vehicles so that that tax aspect can be looked at separately and um, one other item that's come up, and this is something that has been done in-house, and we've also gotten outside attorneys to do training for land use commissions at no cost. There is a, a annual seminar that's held at Wesleyan, and we'll pass it along to development services. I think they're probably somewhat aware of it, but I've gone myself. It's for land use staff, but it's done by attorneys and by other planners throughout the state. It's very comprehensive. It's a day-long seminar. It's either at very low or no cost. It's, it's an affordable option. So we'll be sending that information along so that people know about it. And sometimes, I mean, a lot of the staff members, uh, excuse me, a lot of the commission members have been around a long time. But as you know, land use is a very dynamic area, a lot of new cases, and it will be a helpful thing for them to take advantage of if they can. So we'll pass that information along. Any questions for the town attorney? So do you, you can want to just do it through the town attorney to the town manager? You okay? He has a quick question. We do it through the attorney to you. Is that all right? Or no? All right. Well, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. I've been going by a house on Post Office Road that's on the corner of Wagon and Post Office Road. Yeah. So we're yeah. we're already invest. Yeah. So I won't speak. Go ahead. You know, this is the wor the house that. This is yeah. this is without a doubt. Right. Uh, they're, they're actually bringing stuff into the property. The, the, right. the biggest blight that I've ever seen in my life, besides cars, junk, and I'm sure you people, I don't even live in that neighborhood, but uh, so, my grandson has a friend there and has his. So can maybe Rick or whoever send we'll to the council? Yes, yeah, so I'm sure something's going on, but I don't know about it, and people are calling me, and I don't even, I don't live over there, but, but I go by and it's like, my God. Thank you. <laughs> town attorney, though. It's, yeah, to uh, the town attorney. Yeah. To See, we opened Pandora's <laughs> box here. Yeah. All right. Uh, just driving by that area a couple of weeks ago, I did notice the law enforcement was over at, at that property. If you could uh, maybe uh, ask, um, you know, what, possibly what that complaint might have been, because I did, I did notice that uh, there's a number of police officers that were over there that particular day over some sort of complaint all right okay thank you thank you maria i have number 11 reports of any special committees of the council councillor muller the jfk building committee had its first meeting this past thursday there are 11 well-qualified enthusiastic people on this committee i'm lucky to be part of it the committee will be coming up with an rfq a request for qualifications for an architect as soon as possible there's a procedure that has to be followed in order to receive the 71.71% reimbursement from the state. It's called QBS selection procedure, quality-based selection. Once an architect is on board, there are certain deadlines to meet. A construction administrator will need to be hired. Another procedure the committee will be following is the CMR, construction manager at risk. 
and the committee also hopes to apply for the fast track with the state of Connecticut, which we received on the high school. Thank you. Anyone Thank else you. have any reports to special committees? Councilor Ungar. Uh, the Enfield Together Coalition, along with Youth Services and uh, the faith community, have been doing a lot of work. They're, it's a great group of people. They're working really hard. Um, one of the churches in town is the Ministries of Love and Hope, and they're at 75 Church Street. They're going to be offering Narcan training on Tuesday, January 29th, and that's at 630. Um, this committee is also putting together a notice that they're going to offer to all the churches in town to put in their bulletins and it's all regarding underage drinking and the super bowl coming up and just reminding parents to be careful with your parties and be aware that some kids are drinking that shouldn't be and they're also going to include a recipe with a special punch that kids really like as an, an alternative um, they're also putting together a resource list and they want to distribute it to all the churches in town because a lot of different churches are offering different services to the town and a lot of people aren't even aware of it and the churches aren't even aware that each other are doing it. Uh, example, the warming center, uh, a grief share, um, Alcoholics Anonymous, uh, Embrace Grace, which is, all f which is for um, young girls who find themselves carrying a child and they have no support system. So there's, there's a place that they can get some help um, so there's different um, services that these churches are offering. So we're trying to compile everything so everybody can know what's going on and, and um, be a benefit to the community. So there's lots going on. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Suzak. At the facilities meeting, we decided that we would like to pursue the path to finish the Henry Barnard roof and over the summer start design on the Eli Whitney roof and the Hazardville Memorial roof. And we'll be coming probably soon with a figure of what we need for money because I looked at last year we started, we received, well, we voted as a council saying that we had the funding on May 20th. And it took us till almost December to get the roof done. It's really not acceptable. It was very difficult. So we are looking for in February to be able to vote to say that we have the money available for the project. And then with that, we'll be able to um, apply for the grant. So stay tuned and we'll see what's going to happen. But we are on the move on roofs. Any other reports, special committees? Moving on to item 12, old business. <clears throat> item A, 1, 2, and 3, council appointments. We have none on page 1. Moving over to page 2, council appointments 4 through 17. We have none. Moving to page 3, items 18 through 22. Again, we have none. Item B, town manager appointments 1 through 9. We have none on page 3. 10 through 14, we have none. Again, town manager appointments. Uh, items C, uh, appointments for commission appointed, council approved, one and two, we have none. No, we do. No, that's yeah, a, those, that was. They, those appointments um, were made now by the Planning and Zoning Commission. They've been on there for a, a bit of time, but you have Mary Scott under one and a reappointment of Linda Gray on two. If you choose to approve them this evening, you can do so. Okay, so, the, so do we have a motion to remove item one, the Capital Region Council of Governments, Regional Planning Commission, sir. Um, Hold on. So we move it from the table. A motion to move by Deputy Mayor Suzak, seconded by Councillor Muller. The Planning and Zoning nominated um, Mary Scott for this, even though we have the wrong name here. Mary Scott for this appointment. Do we have a motion to? We don't have to close nominations because the Planning and Zoning nominated her. Correct, Suzanne. We just need to. Just, so, so number one is appointment of Mary Scott. Do we have? We have to vote on it for by hand vote. Sorry, for those, all those in favor of approving the planning and zoning appointment of Mary Scott, by a show of hands. Opposed? Nine in favor, zero against. Item two, again, the planning and zoning for Capital Region Council of Governments, Regional Planning Commission, the planning and zoning appointed Linda DeGray. Do I have a, a show of hands? All those agreeing to the appointment by the planning and zoning of Linda Gray. Those opposed? We have nine in favor, zero against. Sorry. Nothing under new business. Item 13 A, B, which is a consent. B is town council appointed. C is town manager appointed. D is P and Z appointed. Item E, non-union pay plan, stays again on the table 
at this point. So we move over to item 14, items for discussion, which again, we moved items A, 1, and 2 to miscellaneous. So we'll do that under miscellaneous, under the consent agenda. Item 1 stays on the table. Item C, town manager, none, appointments. Item D, town P and Z, approved appointments, we have none. E, F, G, H, I, J, K have been moved to miscellaneous. So now we move to item, um, so item L and M, which remains in items for discussion. So uh, Suzanne, before we go to miscellaneous, if we choose to discuss these, we do it now, correct? So item L, discussion of nutmeg solar, uh, do we leave, we'll leave it for on the table. Item M, school roof replacements. Again, I think we should leave it on the table, correct, at this point? Yes. Right. right. We'll, we'll have details yeah. next yeah. time. Yeah. Okay, so L and M stays on the table. Moving to 15 miscellaneous. Items A1 and A2 are for consent. Um, again, these are transfer funds for CPR training and safe, serve safe training of $1,000 and $600. Um, these are grants, but a quick question was, I think, I don't know if you've already sent, you already have the answer? No, no. I did send them, but obviously it yep. was during the day. Um, in regard to the uh, CPR training, um, this is all regulated by statute. Um, the REMS staff is not eligible to do it. This is for infant CPR instruction. We have to choose from a list uh, provided by the state. And in regard to the serve safe, Again, this is staff training provided by the local North Central Regional Health District. They do charges for it. It's for our um, food preparers and servers, and that's required by statute uh, and the state as well. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. So hearing none, this is for by show of hands for consent. All those in favor of approving, show of hands. Opposed, we have nine in favor and zero against. Thank you. And now we move on to item E. Again, request under miscellaneous discussion resolution request of transfer of funds of 67172 Where's my resolution? Okay. Ooh. So I'm assuming I can, put, after I read the first part, we can waive the rest of this unless you want me to go through ever. So resolve in accordance with Chapter 6, Section 8F of the Town Charter. The fallen transfer is hereby made. Um, well, I guess I'm to it. For, for, um, from Public Works Administration, salaries part time from account 1030100 51 2000 of 31,200. From Social Security of one of account 1030100 of 50, 52 2000 of 194.34. Account Medicare 1030100 522100 of 452.00 from intergovernment transfers of WPC transfer in, in uh, account 1004, 0000-488012 of 33,586. Two, planning and zoning enforcement, uh, planning and zoning enforcement to full time salaries in account 1060600-511000 of 17,815. Stipend in, in account 1060600-511000. 51 6,000 of $535. Life insurance, 1060600 52,500 of $97. Social Security, 1-1060600-522000 of 1,105. Medicare, account 1060600-522100 of 259. Two, code enforcement, salaries part time, account 1060600-512 Zero 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 of eleven thousand eight one nine Social Security one zero six zero six nine zero zero dash five two two zero 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 of seven hundred thirty two dollars Medicare one zero six zero six nine hundred dash five two two one hundred of one hundred seventy one dollars two Human Resource Safety Officer salaries part time one zero one seven thousand seven thousand dash five one two thousand of twenty five thousand dollars Social Security one zero one seven thousand dash five two two thousand of one thousand five hundred fifty dollars. Medicare uh, account 1017000-522100 of $363. Two town manager hearing officers, other professional services, 1012000-550000 of $7,726. Two water pollution control fund transfers, 2100-3350-593-000-33586, certified that the funds are available on January 2nd, 2019 by John Wilcox, Director of Finance, approved by Town Manager Chris Bromson on 1-3-2019. Second. 
uh, move by Councillor Muller, seconded by Councillor Denny. Only question, I don't know if it matters, on the, we have 13-18. You have the wrong date. I don't I'm, know if yeah. it, just want to make sure, Suzanne, we have 13-19. Do we need to make an amendment or is it okay? Okay. Chris, real quick, I know a lot of reading, but a lot of Yes, it sounds complicated, but actually it's a simplification, as we've talked about previously in, in conjunction with the blight review and some reorganizations. What we've basically done is take one job, which was called environmental health and safety. It was funded by partially from Public Works and the Water Pollution Control. Um, we had actually advertised it, and we didn't really, well, we, did, we didn't have any applicants for it. But beyond that, uh, this is a position that was held by Greg Gabinell before he became a deputy director. We're utilizing his skills, uh, you know, jointly in his job, but also advising us on a lot of safety. But what we did is we broke that salary down, and I think we've allocated it in all the next, mo the next two or three um, items are connected to this, but we took the money, it's already been budgeted, and we, instead of one position, we broke it down to where we think it could be used much more beneficially. One, that initial po position of uh, environmental health and safety was just for public works. We're creating a part-time safety officer at $26,000 who will aid all departments, and it's quite an exhaustive list. Greg assisted us. He will work under the direction of the HR director because HR has to provide and file anything with OSHA or the state for workman's compensation injuries. He will do, or she, investigations to determine the cause and to try to uh, make sure that we can correct them if there's anything um, that is not a one-time situation. Snow and ice, but Perhaps it was unavoidable, but if it's a gutter problem, we want an investigation to tell us that and to repair it with building and grounds. Plus, responsible throughout the town for safety, for tests, for drills, uh, be a liaison with OSHA or um, any of investigations that might occur, and looking at workplace safety. So I think it's money better spent, and it'll cover all the town. Uh, number two, uh, third, property maintenance inspector, part-time, no benefits again. Within that budget, of, it'll be about 12000 additional dollars, and that is going to augment the blight officers because we've taken under the new ordinance um, the responsibility from the police and put it in, in blight, so we want to make sure it's properly staffed. And as you can see from this evening, it goes on all year, not just with tall grass. Um, so I think it'll proper, be properly staffed so we can enforce the ordinance, make it a success. Um, thirdly, we had a part-time person was previously uh, Rick Rochelle, who worked under really the auspices of a blight enforcement officer, he was doing zoning. Uh, so to be accurate, he got the proper certifications over the last few years, uh, and he's done a really outstanding job. We've reorganized developmental services. They have told me they could use a full-time zoning enforcement officer. I concur with them for enforcement to make sure some of these issues that are crop, cropping up, we have adequate staff to address them. So this will make him go um, full-time, but Steve's confirmed there will be no benefits. He's a former police officer and doesn't um, need them. So that's within the budget. And then lastly, we do a lot of work on passing ordinances, whether it's snow or um, uh, false alarms, and now also with blight. And we have a difficult we have a difficult time getting uh, hearing officers. So we we carry the ball right to the you know to the uh, touchdown yard, and then we fumble it. If we don't do the um, letters correctly, certified mail, or conduct the hearings properly, we lose it all. So you don't want to go through all the work that we've done and then not at the end be able to uh, carry it across the line. So this would give us we'll come up with a fair stipend stipend depending on what the hearing officer is doing and how many we have a year. I think this will more than adequately cover it. I'd like to use the ones who are existing, who have been doing it for free, and go back to some of those who have stopped doing it because they just couldn't put the time commitment in, or some of them were uh, attorneys that couldn't really pay for their secretaries to do it for free anymore. So I'd like to go back to the ones who have a track record, and then we'll advertise it to the general public if we need additional people. So that is the package. I think it's a very good reallocation of existing money. Uh, it'll give us a lot more bang for the buck. Okay. And that's what all the next... Any uh, questions Steve's here, there. but the next items all relate to that. Yeah. Uh, hearing on roll call, please. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Oh. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Crisotti. Uh, four. There's eight in favor, not against, and no abstentions. There's eight of us, I just learned. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> uh, again, math is my specialty, Suzanne. 
Uh, item F under miscellaneous discussion yeah, resolution resolution amending the zoning enforcement officer job description for what Chris just said resolved in accordance with chapter 7 section 2 of the town charter of the Enfield Town Council the Enfield Town Council does hereby amend the zoning enforcement officer job description submitted on January 2nd 2019 by Steve Belinda our director of human resources do I have a motion by Councillor Crisati second by Councillor Muller I think Chris just gave a pretty good definition any questions on this and Steve Belinda worked on it uh, in conjunction with the CEO and the Director of uh, Development Services. Hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Crisati. Four. There's eight in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Okay, item number G again. Sorry, let me get right there. Again, the item G, discussion resolution, adopting the safety officer job description, again, in conjunction with what Chris just explained. Resolve that in accordance with Chapter 7, Section 2 of the, of the Town Charter. The Enfield Town Council does hereby adopt the new job description for the position of safety officer. Date submitted on January 2nd, 2019 by Steve, Steve Linda, the Director of Human Resources. By Second. Councilor Muller, second by Councilor Crisati. Any further questions on this? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councilor Davis. Four. Councilor Denny. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councilor Ungeyer. Four. Councilor Sakala. Four. Councilor Crisati. Four. There's eight in favor and against, no abstentions. Move on to item H under miscellaneous, a discussion resolution, a resolution authorizing the town manager to enter into a lease with option to purchase agreement with the Opera House Players, Inc. Whereas the town of Enfield owns a property located at 96 High Street, also known as 100 High Street, Lot 131 on Assessor's Map 25. And whereas pursuant to Connecticut General Statute 7-163E, the Town Council held a public hearing on April 16, 2018. And whereas pursuant to Connecticut General Statute 8-24, at its April 5, 2018 meeting, the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission made a positive recommend recommendation to the Council regarding the lease with option to purchase the property. And whereas the current lease for the Opera House Players, Inc. expired on December 31, 2018, and whereas the Town Council wishes to enter into a new lease with option to purchase for two years, now therefore be it resolved the Town Manager Christopher W. Bronson has authorized to enter into a sign the lease with option to purchase with the Opera House Players, Inc., in the name on the behalf of the town of Enfield, subject to review and approval by the town attorney, submitted on December 27, 2018, by the town manager's office. So by Councillor Muller, seconded by Councillor Denny. Uh, I, don't know if, I, I will just say yeah. I thank the town attorney for reviewing this and making some changes going forward, but as I alluded to earlier, a, a significant change in the leases. Previously, it was for a dollar a year. Um, we do have some expenses for the maintenance that we provide under it. Council had asked me to go back to the group, and they did go to their executive board and agree that the first year of the lease going forward, they will pay $750 a month, and then the second year, they will pay $1,000 a month. So I think that that shows good faith, that they're helping us offset the costs of investing in them and making them a success. But it shows good goodwill on their part, and I think it's responsible to our taxpayers that they're contributing as well. So I, I endorse the um, signing of the lease and, and passing it. Any questions or discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzanne. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Crisanti. Four. There's eight in favor, none against, no abstentions. Thank you. Item I, discussion resolution, resolution authorizing the town manager to sign and submit a grant application to the State of Connecticut Division of Emergency, Man Emergency Management and Homeland Security. Whereas the grant provides reimbursement for the Emergency Management Director, <coughs> partial reimbursement for staff support, and operational expenditures such, expenditures such as office supplies. Resolve that the town manager, Christopher W. Bronson, is authorized to sign and submit the grant application in the name in the name and on behalf of the Town of Enfield with the State of Connecticut Division of Emergency Management and Homeland Security and to affix the corporate seal submitted on January 3rd, 2019 by Steve M. Hall, our Director of Emergency Management. By Councillor Sakala, second. second by Councillor Muller. Chris, real quick. Yeah, this is a yearly grant yep. um, that we submit and then we do it in arrears and do it for the next year. It's in the amount of $40,000, 533. This is money that comes directly from them 
to our general fund and it offsets the cost of the stipend we give to our emergency management director, our people in communications who liaison, uh, shelter uh, materials for the shelter that we discussed the last meeting, and also purchases some things for the CERT team in the past that bought them a, a quad. That's the city, uh, that's the citizens emergency response team. And again, anybody would like to volunteer for that, you can go on our website and get the information to do so. But this is a yearly, uh, and it, it's something that we vitally need to do. Any questions for the town manager? Bring in roll call, please. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suze. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Crisati. Four. There's eight in favor and against. No abstentions. Item J, under miscellaneous discussion resolution authorizing the town manager to sign a mem memorandum of agreement regarding the use of federal homeland security grant funds to support regional set-aside projects. Whereas CROG receives federal grant money from the State of Connecticut Department of Emergency Services and Public Protection, and whereas the grant provides funding for six regional set-aside projects, regional collaboration, Connecticut Intelligence Center, Metro Medical Response Team, team excuse me, Citizen Corps, CERT, and Medical Prepare, uh, prepara, Preparation Response, Resolved that the town manager, Christopher W. Bronson, is authorized to sign the above reference memorandum of agreement with the State of Connecticut Department of Emergency Services and Public Protection and to fix the corporate seal in the name and on behalf of the town of Enfield, subject to review and approval by the town attorney, submitted on January 3rd, 2019, by Steve M. Hall, Director of Emergency Management. By Councilor Denny, second by Councilor Crisati. Similar, again, right. again, this is yearly, but it's federal money that goes to Demas um, for those six regional teams. Uh, that includes metro traffic. Also, we have a plan for mass casualty and medical response teams. All of that would be passed through. We benefit from it and our CERT teams, but it isn't money that we directly receive. We get more because it goes to the state and that they manage it, and we get uh, some grant money from it, but also access to those six standalone units. Any questions? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Crisati. Four. Eight in favor, none against, no abstentions. Item K, under miscellaneous resolu res discussion resolution regarding the appointment of the town attorney. Be resolved that the Enfield Town Council does hereby appoint Maria S. I'm going to ruin your last name, Elsden. Close? All right, Elsden, all right. As, so I should just stop right now. I'm going to ruin the rest of the resolution. As town attorney for the town of Enfield, effective January 7, 2019, for a term that expires on December 31st, 2019, be it further resolved, the Enfield Town Council does hereby authorize Mayor Mike Ludwig to sign the employment agreement with Maria S. Elsden as town attorney for the town of Enfield, submitted on January 2nd, 2019, by the town manager's office. By Councillor Muller, seconded by Councillor Crisati. And uh, anyone... Councillor Sakala. Um, I just want to thank you, Maria, for sort of stepping up into the position even long before now. Um, we appreciate it. You've done a, a wonderful job. Um, and, I, and I'm happy that there's one more person on my team that's always cold. So maybe we can work on getting it warmer in here. <laughs> so welcome. Anyone else like to, any other comments? Or Again, welcome, and uh, I said you, you have a perfect personality for this town. You're calm, you're even-handed, and you simply just get right to the point. And you do it in a very eloquent way, and I agree. I think you've done a great job, so we appreciate the fact that you want to take this on. I look personally to working forward you, with you for the next year and hopefully beyond. You know, it depends how, you know, I know you're not close to retirement, so you have a few more years to think about. But again, great job and keep it up, and we certainly welcome you as we couldn't have hired a more, uh, again, qualified town attorney. I appreciate the support over the last few months, and I also appreciate the vote of confidence. Thanks. Any other comments for before we vote? Hearing on roll call, please. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Prasad. Four. There's eight in favor, none against, no abstentions. Congratulations. Congratulations. Speech, your speech. <laughs> we'll save her as a future right. special guest. Uh, moving on to item 16, public communications. Would anyone like to speak for the council? No? Sure? All right. Or if you, well, but as we make sure Mr. Young didn't want him. <laughs> Sorry. 
Moving on to item 17, council communications. Anyone like at this point? Okay, hearing none, motion to adjourn. Sounds by Council Mother, second by Deputy Mayor Suzak. All those in favor? Aye. Now, eight in favor, zero against. <laughs>